Hi, so uh, my name is Kaius Howcroft. I'm here on behalf of Bloomberg. And uh, what I'd like to talk to you about today is how we've architected our uh, OpenStack cloud to be highly available and extremely robust. I'd also like to talk a little bit about um, some of the things we got really right uh, and some of the things, the, some of the lessons that we learned doing it. And also where we plan on going in the next few months. So if you don't know uh, much about Bloomberg, um, if you walk into almost any major financial institution, and even some not so major ones, you'll see screens like this. This is the Bloomberg Terminal, um, or professional service, as it's officially called. Um, that's our core product. Um, <clears throat> there are a bunch of uh, other media products that surround the core terminal, um, which supplement it and support it. Um, and we're also moving into other industries these days, like uh, government and law and sports. And Bloomberg is the the market leader in financial data analysis. <clears throat> uh, just to give you an idea, a sense of scale of our, of our system, um, the Bloomberg backend handles about 22 million instant messages a day, about 200 million messages. Um, it's available in seven, sorry, 11 local languages. Um, we pull down about 10,000 data feeds. Uh, processing about 45 billion ticks a day. So it's a pretty substantial system. To give you a little bit of a sense of the history of this thing, it was started in 81 with just a couple of guys. Um, that's four years before Windows 1.0. <clears throat> By the time the first web server was launched, um, was, was developed at CERN, um, it already had an install base of about 20,000 people. And the growth has been pretty steady since then. Um, <clears throat> By the time Google was launched, we were up 100,000, and we had 300 employees um, in R&D alone. Those are essentially programmers. Uh, right up to the present day, 30 years later, um, 30 years of history, uh, with 4,500 people in Bloomberg R&D, and 30 years of code, and 30 years of infrastructure. So that terminal, the core product, has just been in development for 30 years. Um, it initially started out in uh, the early 80s as a hardware product um, and now has evolved into a software product. But we still make hardware um, in terms of specialist keyboards um, and specialist security uh, devices and, and screens and what have you. <coughs> so what are we doing with OpenStack at uh, Bloomberg? <coughs> so when we were try designing our cloud infrastructure, we had... Um, uh, it was part of a larger cultural shift at Bloomberg towards a DevOps philosophy. Um, the major driver here is, uh, is so essentially turnaround time. Uh, for a company such as Bloomberg, time to market is everything. Um, so we wanted to get that increase in developer flexibility, developer productivity, reduce the turnaround time on uh, machine deployment, um, and get all the benefits you get from machine, provi ah, excuse me, from machine provisioning as code. Um, if you want to know more about this, uh, John Ballone um, from Bloomberg gave a great talk, which is public and is available at this URL. If you just Google his name, you'll find it. So <clears throat> designing our stack, like I said, um, for Bloomberg, high availability, robustness of the architecture is everything. Um, so <clears throat> that's our primary uh, design requirement. Um, we went with uh, the idea of many smaller clusters as opposed to sort of one enormous, huge cluster. Um, and each cluster has to highly, be highly available, not necessarily at the machine level or the VM level, but in aggregate. Um, we also wanted a, a, a simple architecture, which is fairly homogeneous uh, across the stack. We don't want sort of specialist snowflakes here and there, which uh, could cause uh, single points of failure uh, for the entire system. Um, we also obviously want a, an infrastructure that scales horizontally, um, trivially. Um, and one of the sort of key requirements um, in enterprise, which I think is commonly overlooked, is we want it to be deployable in the absence of full internet. So that means maybe no internet at all, or uh, <coughs> heavily proxied internet. And of course, we wanted to make maximal use of all the open source tools and community that's out there and contribute back to it. So the solution we've come up with is we call it Bloomberg Cluster Private Cloud, or BCPC for short. Um, it's available on GitHub. It's a set of chef recipes and supporting scripts and what have you to, uh, to deploy your own cloud. It uses entirely open source software. Um, and I just sort of give a shout out here for all the various bits we use. It's not a totally exhaustive list, list but it's a pretty good subset. Um, 
So please visit our GitHub uh, repo and take a look and try installing it yourself. Um, we'll walk through the architecture a little bit. Um, this slide looks a little busy, um, but it's <laughs> we'll break it down into individual components. Um, this represents our stack, so this is actual an actual fact a picture of three example nodes in our cluster. And of course, the immediate thing that you see is they're absolutely identical across all three. <clears throat> We can break down our architecture into sort of four or five layers. Um, obviously, the host layer runs the OS and what have you. We have a distributed storage layer running Ceph, um, uh, a database and messaging layer, and then the OpenStack infrastructure as a service layer. And then we have a monitoring and uh, uh, services layer on top. And then right at the very, very top, we, we put our high availability layer. So we'll break these down a little bit. The host layer consists um, uh, essentially of the machine hardware and, and the core OS. Um, just with our, like our stack that we want uh, no specialist uh, machines anyway, we don't want any specialist hardware. We use ex identical hardware um, across our entire uh, cluster. We generally, uh, in BCPC, Chef BCPC, we assume three networks. Um, however you arrange those physically is up to you. Um, the first network is the management network, which takes all the traffic for uh, OpenStack um, and some monitoring traffic. Uh, the storage network is dedicated for the storage distributed storage layer. And then the float network um, <coughs> runs the, uh, the VM traffic. Uh, these individual box, just vanilla pizza boxes, you can stuff them full of either HDDs or SDDs, SSDs, excuse me, um, <coughs> and then distribute that, uh, those, those disks, or contribute those disks into the distributed storage pool obviously keeping one or, or a couple back for, for the OS. Uh, we currently run Precise. We're moving to Trusty in the next couple of weeks. Um, and we have some limited support for CentOS. Um, our distributed storage share uses Ceph. Um, every, as I said, every node contributes to the cluster. Um, it's, of course, rack and host and row aware. So we only need a 50% plus one to continue running and keep all our data. Um, the Ceph services we run are Rados block device for backing Cinder and the Rados gateway object store um, for our S3 endpoints. Um, we have boot on volume, uh, uh, sorry, boot from volume and copy on write semantics available. And uh, this has been a, an extremely solid um, part of our structure. It's, it's a very well written piece of software. Uh, the next layer up will be our messaging and database layer. Um, we use MySQL Galera uh, for multi -master, in multi-master mode, and that provides uh, the database services for OpenStack, and also provides database services for some of the higher layers, such as monitoring uh, and power DNS, uh, DNS services, uh, and a few other bits and bobs. Um, our Rabbit uh, layer is, uh, uses Rabbit3 for, for clustering, um, so it's all uh, clustered queues, uh, disk-backed. Um, <clears throat> that provides the, the queuing service for, for OpenStack. Um, and then we provide a single point of access to these, these services through our high availability layer, which uh, I'll talk about in a moment. Our OpenStack layer, um, there's nothing terribly exciting here. It's uh, pretty vanilla. We just deploy everything um, in a sort of shared nothing architecture. Cinder needed a bit of encouragement, but pretty much everything else just runs almost out of the box um, in this sort of high availability mode. Uh, <coughs> all service endpoints are published through the HA layer. And that HA layer also distributes the load across every single node. And then these services can communicate, as I said, with MySQL uh, and Rabbit back through, uh, through the high availability layer. We use Nova networking and not Neutron just for the, the uh, high, availability of, um, high availability of Nova networking. Uh, it wasn't really available in Neutron at the time. Our high availability layer uh, runs KeepAliveD and HAProxy. Um, so KeepAliveD publishes a, a VIP, a virtual IP, through a VRRP. Um, <coughs> every node can contribute. Uh, every node participates in that uh, in that um, in that VIP. Uh, there's a potential problem here that if you uh, if you've got a real network partition, then you could have all nodes try and take the VIP. So what we do is we tie uh, KeepAliveD to Ceph, and you can't take the VIP unless you're part of Ceph Quorum, which keeps the whole cluster together. Um, it's actually quite a nice solution. Um, HA proxy <coughs> uh, takes the traffic from, from KeepAliveD, if you like, and distributes that across the cluster. Um, uh, we actually pass through SSL and do the termination at the, at the endpoint. 
Um, we've had some scaling issues with HAProxy, which we're addressing, perhaps maybe using Apache or, or something like it as, a, uh, as an alternative. So for high availability, we generally have sort of three or four paradigms we use. Um, we have the VIP, um, which we use for uh, publishing all the endpoints um, <coughs> for the services. Um, we have uh, a lot of our components have an inbuilt uh, high availability mode, and where that's available, we use it. So MySQL Galera being a, a good example, Rabbit, and also uh, Graphite. <coughs> um, for database backed applications, such as our monitoring using Zabbix and PowerDNS, we rely on the high availability aspect of MySQL Galera. Uh, and then, of course, for most of the open stack, we just use this sort of shared nothing architecture. <coughs> So our common services layer, um, common services and monitoring, we use PowerDNS for uh, <coughs> our DNS servers. Um, and we have a little sort of trick where we, um, we, we create a view that provides both sort of forward and reverse uh, DNS for all tenants. And our tenant uh, DNS structure is if you're tenant um, foo and you have a VM called bar, then you have bar.foo.bcp.yourcorporatename.com. Um, we've had some performance issues with this particular architecture, and we're revisiting it right now. Uh, we use 389 um, for LDAP services. Um, there's some more work in going on in Chef PC right now to sort of re-examine that. Uh, our monitoring layer, we use uh, FluentD and Elasticsearch um, for log aggregation and analysis, and then you know Kibana is a nice front end to that. Um, so the FluentD agent pulls all the log files off individual nodes, shoves them through the VIP into Elasticsearch, which is running on all our, all our nodes. Um, Zabbix, we've been using for monitoring and alerting. Um, we've had some reliability issues um, with that, that uh, it tends to not deal well with parts of the cluster going away, and also it doesn't really want to run in high availability mode. Um, it doesn't like lots of Zabbix servers to be running. Um, Graphite and Diamond we use for sort of uh, graphing and analysis and drill down. <coughs> and all our monitoring is uh, on cluster. We're revisiting that paradigm to maybe a, a two-layered system or maybe a three-layered system on cluster, and then some centralized logging as well. <coughs> so how do you go about deploying this cluster? Oh, one of these clusters, I should say. Um, seeding is always a, an issue, um, especially if you don't have uh, full internet. Um, Chef BCPC uh, has kind of a nice uh, way of doing this. Um, the first thing we do is stand up a bootstrap node. Um, so if you run just the Chef BCPC uh, Chef scripts, uh, you'll get a bootstrap node which will run Chef server and uh, a cobbler server and also pull down any mirrors that we need to, uh, to get the cluster bootstrapped. Um, so it's, you can stand in one place and pull from the internet and then push onto the bootstrap server. Um, the reason that we have to go through some of these gyrations is a lot of packages like to phone home. Um, it's like Chef, uh, the individual Chef installers uh, really want to sort of call back. Um, so you have to uh, do some gyrations to get around that. Um, <coughs> so the procedure for deploying a, either the first node or the nth node is exactly the same. You just pixie boot it, um, assign a Chef role, and uh, Chef it, and off you go. Um, and then deployment, we either, you can either push or pull uh, updates onto your bootstrap node and then rerun Chef. We don't tend to run Chef continually in production. Um, we've had some reliability issues doing that. Um, we tend to run it when an update hits the system. Uh, <coughs> now, I sort of said that we have an entirely homogeneous stack across all our clusters. Obviously, that's not entirely true. Um, we run what we call a head node which runs the full stack, and we run many of those. Um, but we want to, of course, expand our cluster beyond uh, just all that infrastructure. And so we can add to the cluster just using a work node. And the work node runs a very strict subset of all the available components in a head node. Um, it runs particularly, obviously, it runs the host layer, but it also runs uh, Ceph OSDs um, and the, uh, some subset of the OpenStack layer, usually just a compute API and networking. Uh, and you use work nodes to essentially expand the storage and uh, compute capabilities of a cluster. So one of the really cool things about our, uh, our, our about Chef for ECPC, excuse me, <coughs> is that it comes with its own integrated development environment. If you just download the recipes straight off GitHub and 
bootstrap, you'll get um, a, uh, a cluster running in VirtualBox. Optionally, you can use Vagrant on top of that as well. Um, so you can have a full Chef BCPC cluster, exactly like uh, Bloomberg uses in production, running actually on your, de on your desktop or on your laptop. Um, 16 gigs is, is nice. Um, some people claim eight is doable. Um, and one of the great things about this is absolutely identical uh, system that gets deployed into production, um, even down to the Pixie booting. So you, you deploy a bootstrap node, and then the scripts Pixie boot the individual nodes from there and deploy. So it's exactly the same as what we use, or what, a, what one would use on bare metal. Um, so of course, the question, we've gone to all this length to make a highly robust architecture. Does it in actual fact work? The actual fact, the answer is yes. Uh, most of the time, I'm the guy who gets called um, if there's a major problem, and I spend my evenings doing other things. So um, it's pretty solid. <coughs> Where are we going? Um, <coughs> so the roadmap can be broken down into sort of you know various components for OpenStack. Um, there's some upgrade procedures we have to work through. We're still sort of rolling Havana. We have a branch or two branches in Chef BCPC right now. You can flick between Grizzly and Havana. Um, we're really looking forward to uh, rolling updates in Icehouse. That will be a wonderful thing for us, and also the possibility of single version SKU within a cluster. That would be fantastic. Um, no, Neutron versus Nova networking. We're sticking with Nova networking for now. Um, it does everything we need it to do uh, and works absolutely fine. Um, so we, uh, until uh, high availability is available in a layer three agent for um, Neutron, uh, we'll stay with Nova Networking. Um, the Keep Live D uh, VVRP um, has worked pretty well. Um, obviously, it requires level two spanning between racks, um, and we're doing some work on uh, Anycast and see if we can use a cool Anycast system to sort of host a VIP. Um, we'd like to support some more diverse architectures, and also this uh, continue some support for CentOS as a hypervisor. Our storage, um, the we use. Redis block device and Redis gateway uh, as the main Ceph services that we use um, <clears throat> has a really c clear consistency model. Um, CephFS, which we've had a look at, uh, its consistency model is a little bit harder, um, so we haven't actually used it yet. Um, Ceph is synchronous, um, brings up some interesting questions of how do you do cross data center replication if you want to do that. Um, Erasure encoding, new feature, looks awesome. Um, what does it do for our failure domains? I think we need to understand that. Um, and then there's also some work with uh, HDFS and CephFS. Um, it would be nice, if you look at Chef BCPC, um, you'll also see we have a Hadoop branch in there um, for deploying Hadoop clusters using a similar kind of methodology. methodology. Um, and it would be nice to be able to unify the Hadoop and uh, OpenStack storage layers. Um, so that's an ongoing work. And then, of course, there's the whole thing about cold storage and backups. You know, how, do we, how do we do that? So in summary, um, we've been running this for a year. Um, it's been absolutely rock solid. Um, it's part of a, a very much bigger change at Bloomberg towards a sort of DevOps culture. Um, so it's not just us doing cloud stuff. There's a lot of people working on automated deployment and you know, Chef and what have you. Um, some of the choices we made have been really good. Ceph as our distributed storage layer has been rock solid. Um, some of them we're going to revisit. Uh, we've learned a lot in the last year. Um, and I would encourage people to go take a look at uh, uh, Chef BCPC. It's fully available. Uh, the community there is very welcoming um, to requests or, or rants or, or whatever you want to do. Um, so come along and take a look. Um, download it. Uh, play with it. Um, contact uh, people on uh, GitHub if you have problems, uh, open an issue, um, or even better, submit a pull request. Um, new features uh, are definitely coming down the pipeline based on our production experience. Um, and that's it. Thank you very much.